So at the end of step 6, we sought an equation for this graph, and then we developed that equation in step 7. Now let's execute the function composition, taking that equation and substituting it into the sinusoid equation. And there we have it. That's our equation for this graph that we want. We can simplify this equation down to this. And actually, let's relabel it. Since we called those earlier pieces x1, x2, x3, let's call this one x4 of t. And that's it for our sinusoid segment. I enter it into Desmos just to verify that it works. And actually, here's the x4 of t before I've substituted in the f of t equation. So it oscillates over the entire infinite domain. I'll take that f of t, copy it, paste it where the t was, and I see sure enough that's the graph that we wanted. 5, 5, and 8, 12. I'll go ahead and clean this up, simplify it like I did on the slide. All right, there we go. So back to our x of t graph. We've addressed x1, x2, x3, and we just now addressed x4. I'm going to go back to Desmos and just very quickly, almost real time, show how we can come up with x5. Remember, this is cubic. And I'm going to try to leave you with the impression that once you get comfortable with this process, you can do these steps pretty quickly. Here I am, back in Desmos. And we want a cubic that goes through these two points, 812 and 1322. I want the center of that cubic to be at 1322. So using my knowledge of function transformations, I'll write x5 of t. I'm going to move to the right 13 units, right? t minus 13. It's a cubic graph, so I'll raise it to the third power. And I need to go up 22. OK, there's my cubic graph. I see that it's a little bit too skinny. I want it to widen up a bit and go through this point 812. OK, since it's cubic, if it goes to the left of center 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units, then on a basic cubic graph, it would go down 5 cubed units. It would go down 125 units. But I don't want it to go down 125. I want it to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I want it to go down 10, not 125 units. So that'll be my coefficient. I need to vertically shrink this by 10 over 125. And there, I see that the graph now goes through the two points that I want. But of course, I don't want it to be cubic over the entire infinite domain. I only want it to be cubic over the interval of 8 to 13. And I want it to be constant everywhere else. So remember how this goes? I'm going to write f of t equals slope of 1 over 2. And then I'll do, let's see, t minus 8 inside absolute value bars and subtract absolute value of t minus 13. And then I will add the sum of 8 and 13, which is 21. Now let me go ahead and turn off the other earlier graphs. OK, this is my input function. This is my inner function that I want to now plug into the outer function. Function composition here. So let's copy that. I'll go up here to the t and I'll just paste. Before I bother trying to simplify it, let me make sure this curve looks good. And it does. It's doing exactly what I want and it didn't take very long. This f of t. I've already copied and pasted it into the x5 graph, so I can get rid of it now. And now I'm just going to simplify it a bit. Let's see, I've got a plus 21, but it's being multiplied by 1 half. So 21 halves minus 26 halves. 21 halves minus 26 halves, that's going to be minus 5 halves. So I'll put minus 5, get rid of that. 
double check, make sure I haven't screwed anything up. No, it looks good. Okay, what else can I simplify? I see that one half there. That's being cubed. That's being affected by the exponent. Uh, one half inside the parentheses being cubed is equivalent to a one eighth on the outside. So let me put a one eighth on the outside. Get rid of that one half on the inside. Get rid of those extra parentheses. And let's see, 1 8 times 10 over 125. If I divide that by 2, I get 5. If I divide that by 2, I get 4. Okay, if I divide that by 5, I get 1. If I divide that by 5, I get 25. 1 fourth times 1 25th is, that's 1 over 100. Get rid of that. And there, my graph is still intact. So you see, didn't take very long. And that's our x5 equation. And I repeat, this general process that I've demonstrated can be applied to any function at all. Here are the segments we've addressed so far on x of t. And the remaining segments are both linear. We've already covered how to do linear functions earlier. So I've gone ahead and just put them into Desmos, x6 and x7. You see that I haven't vertically translated either of those functions. There is no plus c at the end. Usually I'd rather just do one vertical translation at the very end after I've added all of these pieces rather than do vertical translations on each one individually beforehand. So with that in mind, since we're getting near the end, I'm going to just get rid of any plus c's I already have in there just to demonstrate what I normally do. If I go ahead and show those functions, we see that they don't have their vertical translations yet. Furthermore, remember how we combined the x1, x2, and x3 functions? We had some like terms that combined. I'd like to do the same thing with x6 and x7. I see a like term in there. I see an absolute value of t minus 17 in both of those equations. So let's combine x6 and x7, and together we'll call it x67. Okay, there it is, combined and simplified. In Desmos, since I have all these pieces uniquely labeled, x123, x4, x5, x67, since they're uniquely labeled, I can add them by entering big X of t equals x123 plus x4 of t plus x5 of t plus x67 of t. I'll hide all the individual pieces. And this is looking pretty good. Look at how it compares in shape to our sketch. But we do need our x of t graph to go through 0, 0. We see that our graph in Desmos goes through the point 0, negative 1.5. To go through the origin, we need to vertically translate this graph upward by 1.5. So let's do that. Again, instead of a bunch of individual vertical translations, we're doing just one vertical translation at the end. I check one more time. Look at all those vertices. Compare their coordinates to what we're expecting. And everything looks good. You can certainly leave big X of T defined the way that it is right here in terms of those other pieces. I do find something satisfying about having the complete definition contained entirely on one line rather than referring to equations defined on other lines. So I typically copy and paste the equations all onto a single line. Beware though that Desmos will let you enter extremely long equations, but once the terms start running off the right edge of the screen, it becomes difficult to access them. So if you choose to go that route, You'll want to start with the last terms and then copy and paste the earlier terms in before them. Let me demonstrate. And I've got that extremely long equation all on one line. The only other thing I can think of to try to get to see some more of those terms is to zoom in or zoom out in the web browser. On most web browsers that I use on a Windows machine, that's Control minus or Control plus. 
Here I'll do a control minus to zoom out and I'm seeing more of the equation. In fact, I managed to get the entire equation to fit onto one line here, but unfortunately the type's really small, so you decide how you want to handle that. If I go that route, I can go ahead and delete these individual pieces now. They've already been pasted into the master x of t equation. So wow, if you've hung with me this far, congratulations. I hope you're beginning to sense the payoff and see how the process can actually be performed pretty quickly once you're used to it. The y of t equation is developed in exactly the same manner as x of t, so I won't take any more time repeating those instructions. For the record though, I'll display both equations here. And returning to Desmos, I've also entered it in Desmos.